Hey everyone, the good captain here. Welcome to uh, the Austro-Hungarian round five in this game of Access Knowledge 1914. Out of box, set up with no bid against a live human opponent. Okay, we will. There's a lot to go over, unfortunately. So let's just let's just hit it first with what happened on the Italian turn. And this was super lucky for the CP, super lucky. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I, just, I got super lucky on the move here. It's actually not a bad move, I think. I think this was actually pretty good. I don't remember if I accounted for this. I got so many other games going simultaneously, but as you can see, he, uh, well, first he, well, what did he purchase? Five infantry. Okay, big surprise. Did he save any? Yeah, he saved one, so wow, Italy's not doing too bad, at least for the moment. Um, so one infantry moved from Tuscany to Piedmont. Okay, yeah, as a blocker, and then two load up on this transport and hit Albania. The rest stock up in Tuscany. So he's got an offshore with two infantry. That's three units attacking at uh, two at two and one at four. So eight total attack points with three units. I've got one at three. Okay, so um, I think if it's not, you can't hear it in my voice and me saying how lucky I was. Uh, let's just look at this on the battle calculator. Wow, never mind. You know, that is interesting. Look at that. An offshore and two infantry is still almost a one in six chance of, of creating a draw. And that's exactly what happened, except to rub salt in the wound. Um, my The Austrian hit back. You know, he, he missed getting whacked and then picked off one of those Italians. So he got a contested zone out of it, but uh, that's it. So, uh, it places him in Rome, and that's that. Yeah, so he's got 13 production units for next turn. Um, the Americans buy six ground units and three transports. So, uh, we're going to see him let's do a sea lift. This is his second turn of... Wait a minute, it's round five, round four, America, oh no, this is round four, so this is a first turn there at war, yeah, da da, okay, so he moves and uh, sea lifts his eight units into Spanish Morocco, now I think at this point that is not the most optimal play, I feel pretty, I'm starting to feel strongly that the United States needs to knock off Spain. And there's a couple different reasons for this. One, it's Spain's worth four IPCs, and when you have 24, you can do a 4-4 flip with eight transports and constantly move eight infantry across every single turn. From Spain, those eight infantry, and of course you can change the build and fit your transports differently, but I'm just, uh, you know, not to get off on too much of a tangent, but creating some kind of green wave seems to be uh, like an economical movement of troops from classic all the way to global seems to be a pretty strong arrow in the American bag of tricks and it's no exception in this game so anyway a 4-4 flip of 8 pieces a turn at 24 IPC is all spent marching into Bordeaux and then to, into Paris or um, to Marseille, Piedmont Tuscany or whatever that seems to be a cost efficient way of getting uh, American troops into the theater but this way you can do it too. It's just more expensive. You have to build more transports. The transport tax is a very real thing in Axis and Allies for the Americans. And again, no exception in this game. Uh, so, you know, he's dedicated himself to the sea lift. So he's going to have to build a lot more transports. And so, yeah, he's got seven. Now, you know, he built that uh, what did he build? Two cruisers or some, something like that. Anyway, I I don't know. I feel fairly I feel critical of this USA play, but 
You know, the Austro-Hungarians still have a navy. Maybe he's intending to go in there and blast that out with the Americans. Uh, I don't know what else it would be or should be or could be used for. So that I'm assuming that's what it's for. Okay, so anyway, enough of that. On to the next thing. And that is this turn. Um, so I counted, already, I've already kind of pre-planned this before I started cutting this video. Uh, we should end with either 33 IPCs or 36. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight in Albania. Uh, go over how and what we're going to do there, but I'll just remove it now. That's sort of the AAA, that's fast becoming the AAA way of saying, uh, I don't want to fight this turn, but I'll retain its contested status. Just take it out, put it back in at the end of your turn. So um, if I add up all the IPCs, it comes up to 33, and I'm also going to be launching attack an attack into Sevastopol, but since Sevastopol's worth 3, I'll either have 33 or 36. I'm not planning on making any other attacks. So this means that we'll take this 35 IPCs, and buy artillery until we get a number divisible by three. So one, two, and hello, 27. So I'm not gonna buy max infantry. I'm either gonna buy fighters or tanks and, ooh, my bad. And as I was looking at this, uh, since, God, since the Russians have three fighters to our five, the Italians don't have any fighters. French have five, but we're not really fighting the French as the Austrians. I'm not gonna buy fighters this turn. Um, I will, however, start building an armor at turn unless I see a reason not to. Um, won't get into a whole lot. If I spend too much, this video will become stupid if I explain every detail. But anyway, I like the idea of an armor. So seven infantry, one armor, two artillery. That will be the purchase. Now, this is an interesting position on the East Front. Uh, this is the first turn where revolution is, uh, I guess it it could have happened last turn, right? Because it was round four last round, but um, we weren't set up for it. So this turn is the first turn where it actually can happen if the Russians pull, if, if all things remained equal, and the Russians simply pulled back this troop from Livonia and gave it to the Germans, then at the end of that Russian turn, there would be three territories that were controlled by the CP, and they they could uh, offer, it would be, it's not an option at that point, offered to the Central Powers to uh, for the armistice. Uh, I don't think they're, the, the, the Russians are going to do this because there hasn't been any battles, and there, there's no... There's no good reason for the Russians to offer terms with such an intact army still in the field. They want to fight uh, unless they really want to deny all this income to the central powers. I expect that the Russian player will not do that. So operating under that assumption, I am going to push two Austrians into Sevastopol. Now, I don't care if I take it or if I do. If I take it, I get an extra three IPCs. Maybe then the Russians want to offer terms because then Sevastopol's in play and the British can pump troops up this way. But um, the primary reason I'm doing this is to deny Russian IPCs. Even if it's contested, uh, you know, this is mobility, or not mobility killing, but preventing the production of another Russian or, you know, reducing Russian IPCs, preventing the construction of new Russian units is three IPCs. So to me, this basically must be done. We need to get Russia dead. And there's, and this is one final thing. If this remains contested and Russia decides to pull out, like in other words, if I don't kill the British unit they're in and he can't kill both of mine on the way back, and let's say the Russians finish their turn and it's still contested and they pull out and offer terms to the CP and the CP accepts okay a lot of stuff has to go a certain way I'm not saying anybody would do this but there is a weird question that comes up this would become a shared territory right this is for the group I've already posted this to accessandallies.org I've studied the Q&A closely and 
this is my basic question. If Sevastopol is a shared territory, can the Central Powers forces pass through it to the other side in any fashion? And I have it detailed out more right here. Uh, so you can pause and read it if you want to kind of see where my mind is at. And this is to my, I, I can't find it anywhere, the answer anywhere on accessanalyze.org. I don't think it's ever been asked. Um, but, the, you know, there's a, when the revolution happens, there's, they're not contested territories. They're called shared territories. And you can read some of this stuff about what is true. And it seems like, Worst case scenario, that if this remains contested and converts into a shared territory, it appears that the CP can move through this territory or into it with any amount of troops and essentially use it as a little Cambodia. Now that does seem super gamey to me. And so I'm hoping to hear from Krieg Hoon that this is not allowed and that I missed something, or maybe one of you all can point me in the right direction. But I, 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 this is something I game theoried before I even started 1914, I noticed this. I thought it would have been asked. Apparently, it hasn't been asked. Or, or I, I'm under a complete misapprehension, which absolutely could occur. But anyway, the main reason I'm doing this is to deny Russian IPCs. That's it. Okay. Um, we need to reinforce Venice. I'm not going to spend any time running the numbers on the calculator. It's, it, it's, a, it's rough. Um, I'm going to bring four troops down here. That should... That basically equals the Italian IPCs uh, going forward. So, and I think that's kind of what I have planned. But also, uh, given my opponent's willingness to sea lift Americans, uh, I'm not totally sure that he won't move this American army into Albania. And so, I'm going to move a troop and two artilleries here as well. And so, we'll have at least something that approaches. Uh, uh, you know, a counterattacking force sh should he decide to do that. I, I expect he'll reinforce Italy. Uh, I think he'd be more worried about losing that capital. And if he does that, then the Austrians will just kick the Albanians out of there, whatever's left, if they don't evacuate, and or reinforce Venice, continue to reinforce Venice. So um, we'll send four down there this turn. I wish I could send more towards Russia, but I've got to take this threat seriously. Okay. Obviously, these units can't stay here. So I'll move the artillery to Galatia, and that is because we are evacuating the Ukraine. Moving this army here to keep it from being attacked. We're going to gather strength over time and rapidly become more strong than this Russian army, but you know, for now we'll we'll pile them together. We don't want to uh, split up just yet or do any kind of attack. Okay. Um, next, I think we push everybody here. Check my palette. Uh, yeah, it should be five. You all will come up here, and then we move it. Okay, wow. We move three here, and I want one in Serbia, right? Check it. Oh, I left them in Rome. Oh, that's why I remember why I did this. I remember why I did this. So we'll leave that fighter there, and. I'm going to move one infantry from Galatia to Romania. And four into Poland. Now, the reason I put this fighter here is just I just want to main, uh, keep an option open for putting four fighters over Moscow next turn. Uh, if he doesn't add a fighter, it leaves me the option of sending in a single infantry and all four fighters to remove his Soviet Air Force for the would either pressure him to build more planes on his turn or uh, not build any and just give the, give up contesting the airspace to the Germans. This would allow the Germans to send all their planes towards France, that uh, all but one or two or whatever was needed. Anyway, that that's the 
thought process there. I don't know how interesting any of this crap is, but all right. Um, so then, yeah, I got to I got to get in the habit of clicking around to make sure that I got everything. Yeah, the boats. Uh, one of the tactics I'm becoming more fond of is using CP boats to spike allied transports. You can essentially create a hostile sea zone. You don't have to. In this version of Axis Allies, you don't have to engage in attacks when you move against naval units. This is the darndest thing. But you, know, you can create a hostile sea zone, and then the power can't load their transports. So after CP goes Russia. Oh, that's right. He has these Russian boats here. So. Russia would get a crack at clearing the sea zone. France can sea lift one, two, one, two. Yeah, France could sea lift these two off of Marseille. Uh, that's anywhere basically. But anyway, okay, let's just get on with it. This is the final answer. Answer I'm rolling, and we killed it. So we have to take the territory. Um, you know that in and of itself might be incentive for the Russian player to depart Livonia and force the CP to accept or decline the terms because when Sevastopol is in play uh, the British down here in India are quite happy I think about that right because then they can attack towards Constantinople or they can come back in and mess up uh, <laughs> the Austrians and the Germans through Sevastopol but anyway whatever this video again it's going too long. Let me just drop these pieces in and we collect 36. So yeah, um, I don't know if anybody wants to take a crack at that answer. What if that had remained contested? And then what if the Russian player pulled his troop out of Livonia? And then what if, the, you know, and they're by offering the CP the revolution and then making, and then if the CP accepted this became a shared territory, what do you think? Do you think that, uh, based off of the, uh, the Q and A that I displayed here, you know, this is, these are the re relevant quotes from the rather lengthy Q and A. Uh, do you think, you, you ha as of the CP, you have to have at least one infantry in there. That's what it says, at least one. So it, it implies that you could have more, and that you, and that you can, therefore, move in and out of it. So why wouldn't you be able to move through it to the other side? Can you attack from it? Can you reinforce from it? Can you move into a friendly territory on the other side? It's, it's not clear. Uh, let's see if he's answered it. Let's refresh this. So, yeah, no. Okay, anyway, what do you think? Thanks uh, for watching this. Uh, all the best from the good captain.